I've made countless videos about editing, color grading, sound design, adding fake mountains into your footage, and those are all fun and interesting, but today I want to talk to you about something that's a lot more important than any of those, and that's planning. And it's easy to get overwhelmed when you're staring at thousands of clips and wondering how you're possibly going to condense them into a five minute video. So today I want to share with you my entire process for planning out the edit before I actually start cutting clips so that hopefully next time you're in that situation, you'll have an idea of where to go. This video is also sponsored by Loop Deck and I'm gonna be talking to you throughout this video about how this nifty little tool fits into this particular part of my workflow, just tossing in some tidbits here and there. But first I wanna give you just a brief overview of what this thing actually does. The Loop Deck Live is a nifty little console that gives you control of your editing software beyond what just a mouse and keyboard can offer. This one, the Loop Deck Live, has six dials and 12 buttons, all of which you can map to any control in your editing software. And they also make larger consoles than this one with more options, more buttons and dials. But I actually like how kind of bare bones and simplistic this one is. I like that you can tailor it to exactly what's most important for your process. For example, I have a color grading workspace set up where I've mapped these six dials to temperature, tint, exposure, black point, white point, and saturation. So when I'm color correcting, I can do that really quickly. I don't have to worry about the sliders. I can just twist the right dial and it does what it's supposed to. And that also gives me the opportunity to color correct in full screen, which is huge. I also have a few other workspaces, like one for sound design, where I've mapped these dials to like volume and track height, which are controls that I use constantly while I'm doing my sound design. You're also able to create custom actions. So you can map one of these controls to do actually multiple things in the software at once. So you can really tailor it to your particular needs. You're then able to create multiple custom workspaces. So like color grading and sound design and basic editing and switch between them depending on what part of the process you are currently in, which is great. I use the Loop Deck Live for Premiere Pro, but it's also compatible with Lightroom, Photoshop, Spotify, and pretty much all the software that you're gonna find yourself using. So there will be a link in the description to where you can check this guy out. And that being said, let's get into the meat of this tutorial. The first step in my process is to write out an outline for the edit. So usually I'm doing this in Google Docs, but sometimes I literally do write out a physical outline in this notebook or on paper. I'll start by thinking about the different sequences that are going to make up the video. So to give you a couple examples from my own work, in the Blue Ridge, there's an intro and then there's the gorge sequence, then there's the smoky sequence, then there's the Blue Ridge sequence, and then there's an outro. In Faces of NYC, there's an intro and then a daytime sequence, then a moody sequence, then a historic black and white sequence and a futuristic nighttime sequence, and finally, an outro. And for both of those videos, I wasn't just figuring that stuff out while I was editing in Premiere. I had gone through and written all of that out before I even imported my footage. The beginning and end of your video are two very important and oftentimes very difficult sequences that you need to put some serious thought into before you begin editing. The intro to your video should show the viewer where they are and what's happening, and the outro should give them a chance to process the video before it actually ends. So many travel videos just end way too abruptly, which leaves the viewer with kind of a bad taste in their mouth at the end of your video. Once I've got these general sequences worked out, I'll start going a little more in depth, thinking particularly about how I'm going to transition between these sequences and the subsequences that make up the sequences. And also of course, jotting down any ideas I might have for particular edits or transitions in the video. And now that we've planned out the edit, we can finally jump into Premiere Pro and start editing. Just kidding, we need to take some time to properly organize our footage before we import it. I organize my footage by day and then by camera, but you can also go even more in depth, sorting it out by different sequences or different shooting locations. Just whatever is going to help you to find exactly what you're looking for when you're digging through the archives 
looking for a clip. I've also found it really beneficial to lock in my music choices before I actually begin cutting clips. So with a big project, I'll usually spend a good amount of time before I start editing, just making sure I have the perfect track. Once I've picked out the right track, I'll actually drop it into my Premiere timeline and start going through and adding markers at important or transitional moments in the song. So if it builds up to a point or there's like a very pronounced beat in the song, I don't know, just like points where it feels like it's gonna make sense for you to change from one shot to another or one sequence to another. At this point, I'll also use markers in Premiere Pro to indicate the different sequences in the video or to indicate if there's a specific moment that I want something to happen in the video. This is a part of the process that's definitely been sped up by using the Loop Deck Live. So I'm able to map these to scrub through the timeline frame by frame, add markers, actually jump between the markers to quickly zip around the timeline. So it just makes this process a lot faster. So at this point, we've written out a plan for the edit. We've organized our footage properly. We've chosen a track that we're gonna use for the video and marked different points in our timeline to indicate the structure. And now we finally get to actually start cutting some clips. And the first step is the select process where you need to go through absolutely all of your footage and chop out all of the usable parts and put them on a timeline. And those are your selects. And then you can do your final edit and really piece together the video on a separate timeline. Yes, I know it's a bit tedious to do all of your selects up front, but you will absolutely not regret it once you start actually cutting clips because you're able to go back to that selects timeline and look at all of the different takes of a given clip and pick out the best one. And you just have all of your usable footage in one place. You don't have to go up to your media bin and sift through all of the unusable footage to find the parts you actually want to use. And this process is probably where the Loop Deck Live saves me more time than any other part of my editing process. Let me explain. So for doing selects, I mapped these top two dials to skip through the clip by one frame or five frames at a time. So I can easily scrub through and find the best part of the clip and cut exactly where I want it to start. I've also then mapped those dials to where I can press them to set the in point and the out point. And I then finally mapped this top right hand button to drop the clip quickly into the timeline. This way I can really easily scrub through the clip quickly, set the in point, keep scrubbing through, set the out point, and then just quickly drop it onto the timeline. It's so much faster than using a mouse and keyboard shortcuts. And when you're doing selects and going through thousands of clips to do the same repetitive motion, that little bit of time you save really adds up. When you're doing selects, it's also optional, but very beneficial to mark your favorite takes. So if you're going through and you find a clip that you know you definitely want to use in the final edit, go ahead and change the color of that clip so that it stands out on the timeline. And that way you can indicate that it's one of your favorite takes. And finally, we have all our selects done and we can start ordering these clips to assemble our final video. And this is where the process kind of gets blurry. Like there's really no formula for doing this. It's really about creativity and flow once you get down to those individual cuts. But the single best piece of advice I can give you for assembling your rough edit is to start big and narrow it down gradually. And this is something you should apply to the writing and planning process as well. So what I mean by that is that if you just think about narrowing a thousand clips down to a three minute video, of course, you're going to feel overwhelmed and not even know where to start. But if you instead think, okay, this is a three minute video, maybe it has five sequences. This particular sequence has three subsequences, and this particular subsequence has seven shots that need to make it up. Well now, all you have to do is go find the right seven shots. Before you just start blindly tossing clips onto the timeline and chopping them up, take some time to really think about the bigger picture of your video, how each sequence relates to the sequence before it and the sequence after it how each subsequence relates to the one before it and after it, and then eventually how each clip relates to the clip before it and the clip after it. And of course, don't be afraid to experiment. If you have an idea, 
toss some clips on the timeline, try it out. If you like how it turns out, keep it. If you don't, toss it and repeat. And finally, this process of going through and really assembling the edit is where I have the most extensive workspace set up for the Loop Deck Live. So for most of my other workspaces like color grading and sound design, I've actually just used a few controls on here. I like to keep it really simple and pare it down to just what I use constantly. But for basic editing and assembling the edit, there's a lot that I use constantly. I've got the dials set up so that I can scrub through the timeline by frames. I can adjust the speed of playback really easily. I can jump between markers, jump between clips, adjust the video track height, the audio track height. And then I've got all of the buttons set up so that I can easily jump to clip endpoints and clip out points and add a marker, adjust the speed and duration of a clip, nest a clip, full screen the playback, enable and disable the proxies, mute all the effects in the timeline. There's a bunch that I've laid this out to do. And these are effects that I'm constantly jumping back and forth between. When I'm going through and making all these basic edits for a long time, it's just such a time saver to be able to quickly hop over here, scrub through the clip, make all these different adjustments rather than doing, you know, the awkward constant mouse and keyboard back and forth. All that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video, learned something new. I hope this can help you out next time you're staring at a ton of footage, wondering how you're gonna pare it down into a short video. I hope you're a little less overwhelmed in that situation now that you've watched this video. Thanks again to the homies over at Loop Deck for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in getting one of these for yourself, there will of course be a link in the description where you can check out their product page and figure out which one is best for you. All that being said, if you did enjoy this video or learned something new from it, feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos just like this every single week or so-ish. And I also post on Instagram all the time. So you should follow me over there as well if you like pretty pictures at Aiden Robbins. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one, which should actually be like a proper travel film. I've been working on one. All right, see you there.